and Central Penn starts off with the ball. We have White, Lawrence, Tab, Gary, Baylor on the floor for the Knights. And back inside, right to Baylor, and Tab can't, can't connect. Thought he was fouled there. Perez drains it from three early. The lead is down to two. This is a big possession here. Down inside to Baylor with the double team. Perez with the near steal. Gary from way outside, nice ball fake. And they call a jump ball. Possession. Possession will return to the Bobcats of Bryant and Stratton. Reggie Perez walks the ball up the floor. He's a 5'11 freshman. Dry has played well on the other side, just tied the ball game. They're, they're coming out a little slow here, Christian. Yeah, let's hope that they can pick it up a little bit. Inside, Lawrence takes it straight to the hole and scores 38-36. Perez walks the ball up the floor. Perez to Perez on the outside. Two freshmen. Both 5'11", 175. And the travel from Duvet. Perez, though, both Perez, both freshmen, brothers, both from Toronto, Canada. Wow. They are in Albany. Albany not far from Canada. White, Baylor, Gary. They're doing some good ball movement here. Baylor tries to put him on four, but he travels. That seemed uh, questionable at best. It's 38 36. Knights lead by two. Puts the ball in the floor. The veteran leader here. Civil drives. And the turnover. Gary's going the other way. Ahead to Tab. What a shot. I love the way that in transition, our guards are always looking up for the easy layup. And it's back to a four-point lead for Central Penn. It's 40-36. Perez the ball fake to Civil who drives and takes the mid-range jumper and hits. And it's 40-38. They gotta get a body on Civil here, Christian. Yeah, definitely. He's starting to spark up. Early in the game, he wasn't hitting, uh, but he's definitely found a rhythm. And Lawrence looks to Baylor inside, can't get the outlet in. And Gary on the perimeter with a quick from way downtown. What a shot. Jaleel Gary with his first three points on the game. Gary, 17% on the season from three, so that was beautiful. Inside, muffs the ball there. Civil on the inside, tries to go in on Baylor and has not didn't get very far. Regroup, 14 on the shot clock. Perez. Four on the shot, takes the shot, and hits glass. That makes it 43-40. Central Penn back up the field, court really quick. Inside the Baylor, and he hits the layup. He is a major key down low. I mean, there's no question about it. They can't guard him on offense and on the defensive glass. Fortunately, he didn't pick up that quick foul in those first couple minutes. Still standing at two fouls, and it's 45-40. This game is going to be another nail-biter. I wonder if it's just us 
bringing the, the charm to the game uh, with mm -hmm. the amazing games we've gotten to see so far. This uh, is pretty incredible, Chris. Just maybe, just maybe. Christian will bring you the nightly news player of the game at the conclusion. At this point, Dion Tab looks like the favorite to win that award, but we got a long way to go. Timeout called. Central Penn College has recently announced the free housing initiative to students living on campus starting in the summer of 2019. Uh, and we are proud to be the first college in Central Pennsylvania to offer free housing to all incoming freshmen. Pretty incredible. If you need more information about that, you can always go to uh, centralpenn.edu slash free housing. Back to the game here, Christian. 15, 55 left. 45, 40, Knights lead by five. Knights have led by Dion Tab thus far, whereas the Bryant and Stratton Bobcats by senior Daquan Civils. Reggie Perez. Number 15, Herman Suazo takes the shot. Listed at 6'6", six, six, Christian. Yeah, he's tall and athletic. He's very athletic. But I don't think he's any match for Noah Baylor, although did Baylor pick up his third foul? And he did. Coach Archer wanted to rip his hair out there. Yeah, I didn't see much of the foul on that one. He had his hands straight up, and he was, his feet were playing it. And there you see some veteran leadership there from Ryan Lawrence trying to calm down his teammates. Civil, Perez. And a foul called there. So three on Baylor, two on Tad. It's not a problem now, but Central Penn has to watch their fouls. Suazo makes the first question. How do you play differently when you have uh, when you're in foul trouble as a player? Um, it's definitely not a good way of playing. Uh, you're definitely looking out to not foul, so therefore you're not as aggressive, and you just play differently. You're just being aware of it, and it just it's constantly in your brain. It's not. A, not a comfortable playing situation. White, Baylor, Gary, Tab, all the way back to Lawrence, inside the Tab, a nearly quadruple team there, what a shot. That was a wonderful post move. 47-44, 15 minutes left, it's a three point ball game. Sybil's inside. Off balance shot, but hits glass. And it is a one point game. Going inside to Baylor, and it looks like they're going to get the foul on number 15. Suazo called for the foul there. It's a one point game, central pin ball, Gary to inbound. Baylor, White to Gary, crosses him over and he goes inside, can't get it. And they're gonna get an over the back call there on number three, and that's gonna be three on tap. So now, three fouls on tap and three fouls on Baylor. 
which honestly are two tallest guys on defense. We don't want to lose them. Looks like Tap's going to have a seat. Will Grant, the senior, will come in. Grant averaging 3.3 on the season. I would love to hear more about these Perez brothers. They look like twins, although. So that's going to be four on Baylor. And I would imagine that Baylor headed back to the bench for a while. What is that going to mean for Central Penn? Uh, just going to mean uh, next man up. Uh, they're going to have to uh, play as one. They're just going to have to move the ball around and help defense on the in the block due to the fact that we lost our biggest guy. Now let me ask you, what do you when do you expect Baylor to come back? How, how much time left do, do you push it? Because he's obviously their best player. Um, at, to a certain extent, I would keep him out for as long as possible, as long as we maintain the lead. But if we're if it's getting close, we're gonna and we need him, we're gonna have to put him in. I just hope he doesn't get that last foul. <laughs> Reggie Perez to the line. He's gonna take his third of third and. The Bobcats pull into the lead, 48-47, their first lead of the game. Not only that, the top two Central Penn players in tonight's game, both on the bench with foul trouble. So as you mentioned, next man up here, Gary puts the ball on the floor, takes it to the hole, can't get it to fall back up. And number four, Will Grant with the putback. I'll definitely tell you, Will's very aggressive and he's a he's a hell of a basketball player. It's almost as if uh, Bobcats have two point guards with the Perez brothers. Interesting defense here, a little bit of a pressure. Back to Perez, over to Perez on the other side from way downtown, the can hit. It seems like in the majority of our uh, broadcasted games that we had a set of uh, siblings. Yeah, that is odd. That's like the third or fourth, well, this is, this is the third time that this has happened. Looks like there's some uh, language being exchanged here. It's 49, 48 nights. Tab and Baylor still on the bench with foul trouble. Tab with three fouls. I would expect to see him back shortly. They don't want to get him on that fourth foul either. Yeah, definitely not. Tyler White with the ball. Sets the screen, and that's for three, and that's money in the back. And the crowd erupts. 52-48. 12-40 remains. He definitely dazzled him with that one. He hit him with the fadeaway. Sybil's the miss. And he's going inside. Oh, Woodard. And that makes it 54-48. And now the crowd is fired up. 12-20 left. Tyler's lighting it up. Reggie Perez comes back and stops that run there. Still 56 50. Little bit quicker without Baylor on the floor, you've noticed. Yeah, that fast-paced offense seems to be uh, what we need as a team. Gary off-balance shot, not even close. Looking for the foul there, didn't get it. He's been on the wrong side of some poor uh, calls here tonight. Sybils. 
to drive, not quite. Watered the rebound, White slows it down. Good call there. Lawrence, what a shot, but can't get it to fall. And a second shot, you could hear that all the way up here, Will Grant. We'll go to the line for two. 56-50. Definitely a team effort. You can tell Central Penn definitely spreads it, spreads it around, but also has a lot of people ready to contribute. Every single player out there tonight is ready for tonight's game. And what a bounce. Yeah, it's definitely what you need. It's, it's amazing to have people come off the bench and just keep that same energy going. Watson returns to the game. Second shot. And that makes it 58 to 50. 10.54 left. Civil. Inside to Perez. Inside to drive. Block. Grant. Really stepping up off the bench. A block. A couple of free throws. Some rebounds. From downtown, and that's good! Trent Watson! The Knights are really gelling as a team right now. They look great. Some great basketball we have here tonight. Central Penn extends the lead to 11, their largest lead tonight. Well, Christian, we'll throw in a shameless plug here. March 10th comes soon. Central Penn Knights men's baseball will be live on the Nightly News YouTube channel. Christian will be their star center fielder and pitcher. He's going for his third consecutive Cy Young Award in USCAA play. Of course, I'm just joking, but we're definitely looking forward to March 10th for opening day. It's a Sunday afternoon, and uh, I'll be here. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Christian will be on the field. But tune in. We're going to call every men's uh, home baseball game, weather permitting, of course. Looking forward to another wonderful season of Knights men's baseball. Let's just hope we get an early spring, like Punxsutawney Phil said. All right. Ten minutes, 30 seconds left. 61 to 50 here. Central Penn by 11. And now, with the foul trouble, it doesn't really seem uh, like as much trouble because honestly, Christian, with this smaller lineup, it seems like they're a little bit more dynamic in, against this particular team. Definitely, definitely. They're doing a great job. Even earlier in the game when they had that smaller group and we got to a, uh, we got to into a good run. And um, I think we should stick with it. Reggie Perez inside to Suazo. Herman Suazo, 6'6 freshman, makes it 61 52. Watered from way downtown. Maybe a little ill advised there with that lead to pull a trigger on that shot. Watered. Does shoot 30 or 45 percent from deep. Perez to Perez. Civil. Back to Reggie Perez for three. No good. Suazo again. And that's where having the big guys in, inside to match up. I would be surprised if Archer doesn't bring in a bigger guy here. Number five, Julio Edwards puts it up. And it's going the other way. There's been many charging calls tonight. I believe three. 
Basketball is a game of runs, though, and it's been 4 nothing here in the last couple of possessions, and now, all of a sudden, the Bobcats are in striking distance. It's like the 2-3 zone here. Sybils from deep. No good. Rebound. Number five, Darrell Edwards. Ryan Lawrence. Going inside. Back out to Grant. To Edwards. Can't hit. But no. Lawrence going for the ball. That's going to go to the Bobcats. Ryan and Stratton with the ball here. The more and more I look, they are identical. Absolutely. Both from Toronto, Canada. Sybils from outside again. You don't want him to get on fire. Grant with the rebound. Edwards to Lawrence. Watson to Woodard. Woodard from way outside. Oh, yeah. And that makes it 10. 64 54 with eight minutes left. White looks like he's going to check in, as does number three, Dion Cab. Wow, Reggie Perez, what a shot. Two people in his face. It is 64, 57 from outside. Lawrence for three. And extends the lead back to 10. Paul Miller, Christian Falk. We got Dylan Kleintop on the camera, Andrew Day. Sideline help. What a game. And Perez again from outside and the tip in from dry. 67-59. Seven minutes remain. Woodard leaves it for Grant, who goes inside and draws the foul. Christian, all I can hope is every sporting event we do is the, as exciting as these last couple. Definitely, definitely. Well, if you guys are live streaming our baseball games, I hope that you guys give us some good luck. Maybe you're the good luck. Maybe, just maybe. We could have an angels in the outfield at the moment. <laughs> I actually just watched that movie not too long ago. Can't hit the second. It's a nine-point lead for the Knights. 68-59. The Perez brothers definitely not letting up. Inside the dry. Now Christian. Honestly, and I've, I've really kind of just noticed this, they're really on a six-man rotation here for the Bobcats. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed that too. Um, I, I think that they just have a core group of guys and they just stick with them. Well, I will say that um, one of the gentlemen went out early, Stefan John, uh, left early with the, he's uh, icing his foot on the sidelines. Uh, Duvet also has been playing, but guys, these these five out there are Iron Men tonight. Yeah, they must have. They have to be getting tired. Uh, maybe that will show in the later, uh, last couple minutes of the game. Well, heck, there's only six and a half left, so they've been doing pretty good so far. Inside, Tab, they're calling a jump ball, and that will come back to Central Penn. Looks like they're calling some sort of technical foul here. Coach Archer, just animated self. We have a technical foul about to be caught here. 
transfer to be on both teams. I don't, yeah, they haven't said anything just yet. We're waiting for word. Still waiting for word here, 68-61, 6 minutes 20 seconds remain in this game. So it looks like Tab did get called for the technical. I didn't see anything there. Did I miss something? So uh, I think it I think it was a senior on um I think it was, uh, I don't even, I'm not too, quite too sure either. I've seen some shoving. I've seen a retaliation at the end of the play. I think, I think one of the other team's players jerked our player up a little aggressively when he was trying to help him up. Is that where we are? <laughs> they call it technicals to try to help someone up? So, that pulls it to within five and the ball. That was huge. Because it would have been our ball. Instead, goes back the other way in the point. I'd say now's the time to roll the dice on Baylor, Christian. We have to get these defensive rebounds. Perez to drive to Perez. Perez blocked by Edwards. Big block there by senior Jarrell Edwards. Yeah, I would definitely look to get uh, Noah Baylor in within like the last five minutes of the game. What do they have to lose at this point? On the floor, Tyler White, Jarrell Edwards, Tyreek Water, Trent Watson, and they're going to call that on tab, and that's going to be number four. He comes out, Lawrence comes in. Big foul there. Now the Bobcats are in the bonus. Five, just under six minutes. It's a five point game. Knights led by as many as 11. Inside the dry. Oh! It looked like that was a. Looks like he got their feet got caught up. Ball goes out of bounds, no foul called. So actually a break goes our way, Christian. It looks like Noah Baylor returns to the floor. He's got to be very careful. And you know what? If I'm them, I'm going right at Noah. I think we want to get him involved on the offensive game plan now. Looks like they're going right to Baylor, but Suazo, Suazo with the hit. Perez draws the double team out to Perez, is open. Nice finger roll there, but can't get it to fall. And uh, Lawrence with the rebound. White, Lawrence, Baylor, Woodard. And Watson on the floor for the Knights. Perez, Perez, Sevils dry, and Suazo for the Bobcats. And it's picked. Sevils takes it the other way. But it's gonna pull it back, because didn't have numbers there. But inside to dry over Baylor. Can't get the fall. Watered the rebound going all the way. Seventy to sixty-three, seven-point game, four twenty-seven remains. Why doesn't? I'm, I'm curious why Central Penn allows them to roll the ball down the court every single time. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that either. I'm not even too sure why they are rolling the ball down. Uh, it's not nearly. Uh, They've been doing it the entire second half. And they weren't even, it's not like they were losing by a lot either. 
White sets something up here. Looks like they're ISO for Baylor. Suazo knocks the ball out. Remember, Baylor has four, an offensive foul to foul him out of this game. Time, just under four minutes. Gary back in. Woodard played great off the bench. I have never seen anything like that before. That was, I've seen Tip that a couple of times. Pass right back to him and didn't, I mean, there was nothing he could do there. Perez, good seven point game here. Sibbles to drive to Perez. And Perez hits. And it's 72 to 63. Archer letting the ref hear it. And it's 72 65. A seven point game with three minutes and 33 seconds remaining. It's going to be another nail biter here, Christian. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's also going to be a very interesting conversation about who our nightly news player of the game is going to be. We've got a couple of, I mean, between White, Lawrence, and Tab, they're definitely all in the running at this point. But I guess it depends how the rest of the game goes. They're certainly making us earn our paycheck tonight, Christian. What a game thus far, 72-65. The Knights lead by seven against Bryant and Stratton. Alden. White walks the ball up the floor. We've got White, Watson, Baylor, Lawrence, Rick Gary. From deep. Looked like he got hit there. Watson couldn't get it to fall. And this is a huge possession here, Christian. Perez drives to the hoop over Baylor. What a shot. Crowd is getting into this game and is a three-point game. 70-67, 2.58 left. And it's gonna come down to the last couple minutes here. Baylor at the top of the key. Puts the ball on the floor, goes down. Noah Baylor for a charge. And Noah is going to foul out. This was just an all around disappointing game from Noah Baylor in foul trouble all day. And what a way to get fouled out with a charge that was very questionable. But now, Baylor out of the game. 239 left. Drive from deep, no! Gary with the board. Christian, it almost looks like when they're rolling that ball off the court, they're using it to set up a screen. Did you see that on the last play? Yeah, 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 that's definitely, that's definitely a possibility. Big possession here for the Knights. Lawrence, what a shot, but can't get it to fall. Over two guys, I thought he had it. Perez to tie the game. Under two minutes, this game is tied. 70 70. White pushes it inside in the scoop. 
got to take some talent to do that, Christian. Yeah, that was a beautiful finger roll. He took, a, he took full advantage of that right there. Dibbles from deep. There's a... I don't know what happened there. They call a travel, but there were two different bodies on the floor. Gary ended up on his backside. I'll tell you what, both these teams came to play tonight. 72-70, 122 left. Yeah, this has been a very scrappy game. We're coming down to our last couple of possessions here, Christian. White looks to set something up. 10 on the shot clock. They wanted to get a better shot than that. Didn't go. Gary looks hurt. Five on four going the other way. And Souza. Suazo. Gary not happy. Doesn't want to get a technical foul here. Somebody needs to get him away from the ref. This game is tied. Stoppage in play. Gary looks injured. <clears throat> looks like he hurt his shoulder there. Forty-eight point seven seconds left. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Remember, the Bobcats are in the bonus. Central Penn is not. Oh, a travel! What a call! This game is tied, going back the other way. A heartbreaking call there, and Coach Archer calls it timeout. Uh, I would say we definitely picked some pretty good games. <laughs> you could definitely say that. Probably some of the best on the season. Well, the Knights haven't played, as Coach Archer said, in about 10 days. They haven't played at home since January 3rd. This is quite a quite a game, and let's hope that uh, they can play some tough defense here, even with Noah Baylor fouled out, and hopefully the 37 seconds, or we're going to go to overtime. Gotta remember Tab also with four. The home crowd trying to rally the Knights here. Well, big defensive stop needed here, Christian. They've got their defenders on the floor. Grant, Gary, Watson, Lawrence, and White. Perez, Perez, Sibbles, Dry, and Suazo. These guys have to be tired. They play the entire second half. Looking for the screen there, but bounces off on the double team. Sibbles, what a save. White with the save. Going the other way, and it's still going back the other direction. Perez to Perez. He ends up on the floor. Perez. Six seconds left. With the double team. He got Perez from deep. No. Extra basketball here, Christian. 72 72 at the end of regulation. At this point, I'm surprised Coach Archer has hair left the way he's been <laughs> trying to pull it out throughout the game. Very stressful, very stressful. I mean, what a great defensive play there on that end, Christian. 
They defended. Perez has been hot from three, but they played great defense there. Good double team in the corner. Probably not the shot they wanted to take there. So we got five extra minutes. Well, Paul Miller, Christian Folk, Nightly News Media Club. We're here with Dylan Kleintop. On the camera, Andrew Day, sideline help. Fortunately, I got a little bit more uh, voice left to get me through overtime here. No Noah Baylor in overtime. Dion Tad with four fouls. Gary's still out there. Tab on the bench. Ryan Lawrence, Tyler White, Jaleel Gary. The tip. Goes to the Bobcat. Ball fake there inside the swallow, and he can't hit. Swazo goes to the line. Hits the first. Swazo, the second, and that's good. And the Bobcats back in the lead. 74 72. Only the second time Central Penn's trailed tonight, Christian. Gary puts it on the floor, goes strong, but can't get it to fall. Gary is an extremely passionate player. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, hey, there's a fine line between passionate and getting yourself in trouble. Lawrence, the step back three. Mm, can't get it to go, try the rebound. And this is a huge defensive stop needed here for the night. Perez to Perez with the pick. And foul on White. Kobe Perez to the line. It's the first. Seventy-five, seventy-two. The Bobcats lead. Huge offensive sequence here coming up for the Knights, Christian. Yeah, we're gonna have to make a quick push. White brings it up. White with the crossover. And turns the ball over there. And the quick foul. I'm not sure if I would have went straight for fouls right there. I think he was trying to um, get a jump ball call. Down four. Lead the entire game, save maybe 30 seconds, and now overtime, quickly, the tides have turned. Perez misses the first. Big 
free throw here. And he hits the second. That makes it a five point game, 77-72. Setting up a play. Watson. Water. And they call travel. Back to back turnovers in overtime, Christian. Still three minutes left. Yeah, we still have time. And an errant pass. Big break for the Knights. Three oh six. Knights trail by five. The crowd's coming alive. What a move there by Grant. Can't get it to fall, but will go to the line for two. Grant goes to the line. Just short. And can't make either. And that's huge. Five point deficit for the night. Dribbles inside, Plaza, what a play. Down seven now in overtime. Lawrence for three, no good. And it looks like time might be running out for the Knights. Dry, and that might do it. The nine point deficit with only 220 left. But let's not give up hope yet. White drives to the hoop, does get the call, but he looks like he took a spill. White's giving it, all, giving it his all tonight, that's for sure. Edwards will check in. You know, I really think that the tide was turned when Noah Baylor fouled out of this game. Yeah, it definitely put a damper on the night's nice play. Tab hasn't seen the floor in overtime either. White makes the third. Draws us to within eight. And he drains the second, and that brings the game to within seven. A big defensive stand here is needed. Perez, Civil to Perez. Nice defensive switch there. Only nine left on the shot clock. What's the call? They're going to get white. So it looks like they called that one on Edwards. For two. Minute 44 left. And Perez a little short. Elbow, 
misses them both. Central Penn only down seven. They're gonna have to push. And that's what White's gonna do. Nice spin move inside. Can he get it to go? Yo, Grant. Makes it a two possession ball game. Timeout called 8176. One minute 32 seconds remains in overtime here, Christian. So what's this? Two out of three. We got a last second shot and two overtime games. Couldn't ask for any much better basketball games. Not at all, not at all. White, Edwards, Watson, Lawrence, and Grant on the floor. is the time for the Knights. <laughs> Brian Stratton ball. Nell inbound. They're going to play a press here. Sibbles puts it on the floor, but it's nearly stolen. Back and forth. Central Penn playing some great defense here, but can't get the ball back. And there's a steal going the other way. And it's fouled. Watson will go to the line. Could these be the two biggest free throws of the night season here, Christian? Definitely, definitely. They're they're huge. And they're gonna call a timeout. We'll think about it for a second. I gotta tell you, Christian, it'd be awesome if we could either go back to the studio at halftime or go to commercial every once in a while. Uh -huh, yeah, definitely definitely give us a break, but nothing's better than live streaming the entire time. I mean, time. this game is just unbelievable. It'd be even more unbelievable if we come back to win. That would definitely do it. One minute, five seconds remain. Five point lead for the Bobcats, the Knights Trail. on the line, shoots 53% on the season, and gets the second one to fall, that makes it a one possession game with one minute five seconds, they're on that press defense here, very close to a travel, there's almost another travel, And they're calling a foul there on number five, Jarrell Edwards. And that is huge because this could make it a two possession game here. In the double bonus, he'll get two. 
Just can't hit a free throw here in overtime. Reggie Perez 0 for 3 at the from the line. But does make that, making it a two possession game. Lawrence walks it up. Nice behind the back dribble, what a play! Holy cow! That was a phenomenal take. That certainly might be the play of the game, that's for sure. But the Knights still trail by two with 40 seconds left here in overtime. 